the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. One problem with we Lutherans at Christmas time is we have the worst memory when it comes to our rich hymnody. Every time Christmas time rolls around, we become a bunch of English hymn lovers. We sing all of them. I chose the hymns and I picked them, and they're all English hymns that sing about animals and snow and hay and all that fun stuff, but not much about Jesus himself, what he does for us. But there's one great Christmas hymn, Let All Together Praise Our God, written by Nicholas Herman. And one of the verses says this, He, meaning Christ, undertakes a great exchange, puts on our human frame, and in return gives us his realm, his glory, and his name, his glory, and his name. We read this text this morning, John 1, 1 through 18, the prologue to the gospel according to St. John, because it is one of the richest texts concerning the incarnation of our Lord, or God becoming man. We don't really meditate on what's happening here, what is taking place when the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, becomes one of us. As it says in our text, the Word became flesh. And it says, dwelled among us. Or better yet, he encamped. He became one of us. What does that mean? This is fantastic news that God became just like us, except without sin. He's pure and holy, yet he binds himself in human form allows himself to be tempted by the devil the same way that we are tempted, allows himself to hunger and thirst and get tired. Our God does this for us. He does it because man failed. In the garden, pure Adam and the pure woman failed. Not just because they took a piece of the fruit and ate. That was but a fruit of their transgression. No. They placed their fear, their love, and their trust in the word of the serpent. Rather than in the word of Christ. In the word of God. And because of that, they fell. Fell into darkness and transgression with a wicked inclination that you and I still have today. It's easy to sin. None of us have to be taught how to sin. You don't see programs, let's teach you how to be lazy, or how to be a glutton, or how to get angry, or how to want your neighbor's stuff. That comes naturally to us because of the fall. Unnatural is to be patient. Unnatural is to be generous. Unnatural is to love unconditionally without any thought of anything in return. Christmas morning is a great example of how we want something in return. When you give someone a Christmas present, what do you put on it for, to this person <laughs> from this person? Right? This prologue in John.
John's Gospel proclaims to us that our Lord Christ took on our flesh. It didn't just appear like He was human. He became man. All of our depravity, He became for us. And what does it say at the end of that prologue? That in Jesus we receive grace upon grace for our transgression. It doesn't say grace with a limited amount of grace. It says grace upon grace, which means there is no end to Jesus' mercy and compassion for you. Like it says in our epistle reading, not according to our works of righteousness are we saved, but according to His mercy that He poured out on us generously, meaning He drowned us in that mercy. So that being justified, meaning being right with the Father by His grace, we might become heirs in the hope of eternal life. That is who we are in Christ. But we'll never receive that or take it in. As it says in verse 5, the light shines in the darkness. And it says the darkness couldn't get it. Never comprehended it. Just wouldn't take it in. And that's what the grace of Jesus is for you. It's, it doesn't make sense. It's crazy. Why would anyone forgive us over and over and over and over again? No matter how many times we mess up and fail, our Lord Christ forgives us. It's great that you all are here this morning to receive the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's good that at this time of the nativity of our Lord, the Holy Spirit has brought you to this place to be fed, nourished, and forgiven. But guess who dwells right outside the door on your way out? That wicked foe of old and that lovely world are out there that don't want you to be here. They don't want you to be here to be told you are loved, you are forgiven, you are safe and secure forever. So I beg you and exhort you, don't resist that spirit. You're going to fight them. We fight them every day. But that's why the law comes to us, smacks us upside the head. And says, you can't merit salvation. You can't do it on your own. You're not going to have that good feeling in your gut very long. It's going to go away. The devil doesn't want you to feel comforted in Christ. He wants you to be depressed. He wants you to fight. He wants families to be torn apart. He wants everybody to dwell on their mistakes and their transgressions, rather than the mercy of Christ. But that's why we have that beautiful verse in verse 12. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave not the right, but the gift, the ability to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So be at peace, beloved, for it is a good thing the Holy Spirit has brought you here today. For you are made a child of God, not by your decision, not by your will, not by your merit, and not by your works, but by the will of God. For Christ your Lord has wrapped himself up in any transgression, every failure you have committed in the past 
today or in the future, your Lord has wrapped himself up in so that this day you receive his robe of righteousness poured out on you generously, returned back into your baptismal grace so that the Father does not see your sin. He does not see your doubt. He does not see your fights, your fits, or your failures. He sees His beloved Son. He sees you, pure, robed in white, His Beloved saint, Christ is among us. The word became flesh so that we who are of the flesh may be pure and holy unto eternal life. Merry Christmas to y'all and may you continue to dwell in the grace of our incarnate, crucified, and risen Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.